thank you um, for uh, PIDS for actually inviting us. And yeah, I'm really honored to be here. So um, yeah, uh, good morning, everyone, um, to all the all the attendees of the webinar. I'm Carl Medina, um, a graduate of agriculture, BS Agriculture and UPLB. Um, unfortunately, hindi ako tumahap sa agriculture, naging more of inclined technology. Um, I also um, nag major ako sa agricultural extension. So it's more of actually communicating with farmers and making sure that they actually understand um, the research that's being done in the academy is what um, I think I'm really good at. Um, so yeah, let me go and introduce AgriTips first. Um, baka sa nag-iisip lahat ng tao, um, sin ba si Carl, sin ba si AgriTips? And I think this is actually very um, important then. So everyone can actually know. So let me just share my screen. Uh, let me know if you can see it. Yes. All right. So AgriTips. Um, AgriTips is transformed information for productivity and, and sustainability. Um, we are actually focusing first on mango because it's actually mango farmers. Um, they're not really that uh, tech. Uh, they're actually very, very techy. So every anything that you, we actually can introduce to them that is actually inclined to the technology, they are already adapted to. They're also um, have a, they also have access to all or to to internet access and to technology as well. Like they have mobile phones, they have laptops, they have uh, smartphones as well. So why did we focus on mango? So in 2018, yung korikong nakikita po natin. Um, nagkaka infestation siya sa Samal del Norte. Um, the example of this is actually um, Mang Boy. He's actually a farmer in Samal Island in da Davao del Norte. He has a 24 hectare mango farm. And nagkaroon ng out ng infestation, gawa ng misuse of pesticides. And of course, pesticides, who are the best piece of people to actually talk to about it? It's exactly the either the chemical company technicians or yung mga uh, municipal agricultures or agricultural extension workers. So nangyari yun dahil um, they believe that they actually will need to use the same insecticides that they use for previous cropping seasons. And no one's teaching them about insecticide resistance. So before, uh, Mang Boy is actually earning uh, 2 million per hectare per, per cropping. And because of the increase in the usage of pesticides, bumaba siya to 500,000 uh, per hectare per cropping. Um, if you compare these to other crops, um, this is actually bigger numbers. Um, and what does this entail? So in the, in a five-year period alone, the Philippine mango industry in the Ilocos region or region one has lost 1.4 billion pesos due to um Coricong or to the mango sesed fly. Um, what what is the Philippine government doing about it? So we, the Philippine government, and also with the UPLB, um, they're actually conducting insecticide resistance management training. Um, this is actually our CEO, uh, Dr. Celia Medina, and she's been going around the country as a specialist in in insecticide resistance management. Um, here is actually where all the mango growers are. It's actually spread over eight regions, and there's 1.9 million uh, mango growers and contractors, and there's only one resource per sun. So basically, it's um, physically you know, impossible to actually go and cover the whole area um, with one person or one team alone. And that's why we actually came up with uh, tech. This is actually where the first um, study actually will fall or actually will be relevant. And because we create or instead of waiting for a project or for a grant, we actually uh, created Mango, uh, the Mango Pest Buster app. And it actually gives a personalized recommendation of uh, pesticides, what to use, how much to use, whenever, wherever. Um, it's unbiased. So hindi siya nakadepend sa, sa brand name. We'll give you everything. Everything na nandun sa, sa FPA or 
or Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority, all the uh, um, accredited or relevant na pesticides will actually give it there. Um, and it will actually record it. Um, I know it was actually one of the recommendations that that all the agriculture or all, all the practices or, or insecticides are actually recorded. It's already in the app as well. Um, and it also has the handy reference. I know this is also done by uh, Project uh, Serai and Speed Tech um, as well. So during our studies um, or during my, um, Dr. Medina's studies over the past 20 years, it will it can actually decrease the amount of insecticide cost by up to 80 percent um it actually had a proven methodology to actually have flawless roots if they follow it um yeah and we actually update uh, the fpa registered uh, pesticides on the app uh, on a quarterly basis so um, this is actually very important as well i know all the other apps that was actually introduced during the first study are actually free apps but the problem with something that's free is who will actually operate and maintain the app? It actually costs money. Um, so we're actually, um, AgriTips is actually uh, selling or selling the subscription for 1500 which is just um, one kind of mangoes, which is what they're actually saving if they actually follow it or if they buy one one liter of insecticide that's just 1500 um uh, um another hurdle that's actually um very important is how do you reach the farmers so we actually since dr medina already has um a network of mango growers and and uh, contractors we just tap into them every year there's a mango congress and we just reach out to them we have a new product can we organize your farmer organization and we'll actually teach everything to you? So um, this is actually our team. Um, Dr. Sally Medina is actually a, a professor in UPL, UPL Spania. She's the president of Field Fruits Association and a consultant of the DA um, FAO. And she was a former NCPC director. And uh, that's actually the rest of the team. Um, like, like what uh, Mr. Sunny said earlier, um, we actually dream that we can, in the future, um, make every farmer an expert. So, yeah, and that's just a brief introduction of who we are. Um, and this is that, and this is actually my reactions to the first study. Uh, yes, there are a lot of a lot of um apps or technol or um technology that we that is actually available for agriculture. Um, but then. Uh, most of the free apps are actually being free to use um, to the government. Is, do, do, the, do these um, rice farmers and rice corn farmers actually have access to a smartphone, number one, because they need to access the information right then and there. Uh, the second one would actually be, do they have internet access um, to gain access to these um, agriculture uh, 4.0? Um, yeah, but then we're making big strides in actually consolidating it. Um, but then there are also a lot more agri agri tech startup companies um in the in the in the startup world that have barriers of actually introducing themselves or presenting themselves um to the farmers, their hard farmers. Um agriculture is very broad. Um we're only focusing on mango right now because we know that they're actually open to actually accept the technology and they have the access and the capacity to pay for it that can actually operate and maintain the app as well. Um, this year we're actually, and um, another factor for the first study is that, um, I think it's Dr. Briones who mentioned it earlier that there are, most of them are actually in the pre-commercialization stage. And that's actually just the first part um, next would actually be what is the um, product market fit or what's the acceptance and how can we maintain that? Um, that's another study. Um, 
in all honesty, that's where AgriTips is right now. We have the app. We have 800 paying users. We want to know what else do they need. So it's more of communicating more to the stakeholders. Do they need bigger fonts? Do they need a good color? Gusto ba nila ng Tagalog? Gusto ba nila ng in a local language that they can understand? And that's actually where the gap is between um, the tech side and the stakeholders that we're actually trying to assist. Um, yeah, I have five minutes left. And in the second study, um, there's also the rapid, the rapid program by DTI. Uh, AgriTips was also invited um, by DTI last year. Uh, the matchmaking, um, well, let me first react that. Um, it's actually an amazing project. Uh, DTI um, is one of the first ones to actually have a multifaceted approach. And um, since we're actually the MSMEs that were on there, um, it was actually more of a systems approach, which is very unique, um, that focuses on the social uh, socioeconomic uh, uh, factors as well. Um, another, and the one thing that, that, was really intriguing that um, encouraged agritips to participate is that in my opinion it's actually sustainable it's not just um, a funding and then bahalana. it's more of we will match you the farmer organization with the tech component will match the grants and then let both of you talk to each other and communicate um in our experience, we were actually matched with cacao farmers. Um, unfortunately, we do not have the tech for that yet. And with the time frame that's actually given to actually for agritips to assist the farmer organizations or the cooperatives in the Davao region for for cacao, it's very bleak that we can make an app that's actually functionable into their liking. In, in a short amount of time. It would take a lot longer than that. And that's where the deal actually um, did not actually push through. But it's a good it's a good um it's a good initiative by the DTI. Um it, it's very promising. And I know that there's more um agri startups out, out there that can actually um assist the more targeted or the more specific uh farmer organizations if given another round or if they have a bigger pool of all the startup companies or MSMEs um, out there. Um, yeah, that's it on my end. Uh, thank you.